What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Jimmy Smith, Ryan Moody, Iron Man May Show. Jimmy, how much prep do we do for this? Uh, none. None. I wonder if we're going to disagree. Because you know that the biggest numbers are Conor McGregor shows. Did you know that, Jimmy? The biggest? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I looked at... That seems to be a theme. I, I looked at the Chris Weidman fights, and, and I cannot believe that was 2013. I remember those fights like they were yesterday. Really? I don't know why they stuck out to me as much as they did, but I, they, they, those fights really stuck with me. I don't, I don't mm. know why. So Anderson Silver, uh, Conor McGregor, uh, Notorious versus the Spider. I, there's going to be some great apparel for this, no doubt. You can only imagine. But I got to say, for Conor, and, and I, I, it really bothers me to say this about Anderson Silva. Conor kind of seems like he's going after low-hanging fruit. When you go back and look, Anderson Silva has looked progressively worse and worse. Yes, there's the Derek Brunson win. Um, yes, there was technically the win over um, Nick Diaz, but we all know what happened there. But other than that, you know, he stuck in there against Israel when a lot of people didn't expect it. The loss to Cantonier, the loss to CC to, to save UFC 200, that always always be a fan favorite memory for me. But I don't think he ever got over the Chris Weidman losses. I really don't. I don't think mentally he ever recovered from that. And when you look at what Conor McGregor is going to bring, maybe years ago this would have been an entertaining fight or a more entertaining fight. But, you know, to me, Conor has speed mixed with power, aggression, fast movement. Those are things that Anderson has struggled with lately. More conventional stance than somebody like Izzy. You know, more conventional striking uh, obviously, you know, you want to compare what he did with Chris Weidman just trying to, to be fluid and move, and it eventually caught him. You know, if, if Chris Weidman is going to catch him, Conor McGregor is absolutely guaranteed to catch him. So it, it's an interesting prospect of a, a quote-unquote super fight. But to me, at the UFC level, this is just coming at an unmeaningful time for Anderson Silva. And for Conor McGregor. What gets me about this is you have perhaps – the most stacked division in the history of mixed martial arts, the 155-pound division in the UFC. And you have a crossover star who is the biggest name in terms of, you know, generating income in UFC history who's in that division and isn't fighting those guys. I don't care who he fights in terms of Anderson. So you fight John Jones for all I care. He's not fighting 155-pounders. He's not fighting the best guys out there in the division where he took the title and never defended. I don't want to see him fight another big name that is maybe past their prime with these fun, exciting fights or like these novelty fights and freak show fights. Those are for when you're done. Those are for when you don't have anything more meaningful to do in your division. And that's ridiculous. Connor does. He does. And he's not getting down to business at 155. That's what gets me about him fighting Anderson Silva. It's not what Anderson Silva has left to give and will Anderson Silva get beat up or I I don't I don't care. This won't change the rate or the rankings in any meaningful way at 155 or 170 pounds. And to me, going outside of that, while you still have fights and you're still young enough to do some damage and, and, you know, maybe make a name or maybe make a legacy and you don't do it. That's the tragedy to me. It's, you know, I was raised with, you know, I've said this before, the four Kings, right? You know, Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Marvin Hagler, they all fought each other. The idea that somebody's up there, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard's like, no, I don't want, want Tommy Hearns. I want to go up to light heavyweight. I'm going to go up to cruiserweight and take on those guys. Okay, well, how about you clear out the division you're in that's full of superstars? And that's what's not happening with Conor McGregor. So everything else to me is, is, is at best interesting, at worst a distraction. Yeah, I mean, I, I compare that to Jose Aldo. You know, they, they went on very different paths after that fight. You know, Jose went and stayed in his division primarily, just moved to, to Bantamweight, 
but had meaningful fights. You know, and, and for that matter, let let's be fair. He had fights against ultimately who will become legends: Max Holloway, Jeremy Stevens. It, it's interesting that this is the the way that Connor is going. I, I understand fighting for namesake. I understand having to ease your way back into a division. I thought that's what Cowboy Cerrone was for. Exactly. To me, that's what Cowboy was for. That's the, I don't want to say tune-up, but, the, you know, the, the the getting back into it kind of fight. Now I'm going to go on this tour, and I'm going to be on a schedule in, in 2020. I'm going to do this, this, and that. And it's like, you want to fight Anderson Silva? To me, that's, I don't know, that's that's where it all goes off the rails. Yeah, we're going back to square one. Like, what, what yes. I mean, just... I mean, I, I think in in the core, what all fans want is divisions not being held up and give it, giving me sequentially meaningful fights. One fight, one fight, two fight, three. Let's build to something. And, and although you listen, we're going to watch, we're going to buy whatever we have to do. Just make it mean something in the long run. You know, make me be interested other than it's a Conor McGregor fight. I want to see him try to recapture a title, and this is, if nothing else, wasted time. A, a fight that could happen in five years, I mean, just as much then. I mean, I don't know if Anderson's good for it in five years, but a, a fight that'll mean just as little in five years as it does tomorrow. As yeah, exactly. It would have yesterday. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not meaningful. It's not meaningful at all. It's a distraction. It's another opportunity for Conor McGregor to not take on one of the murderers at 155. Takes on Dan Hooker, Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson, any of those guys. And I'd be, okay, great. Big step forward. Good move for him. But, you know, it's he wants legend status without clearing out divisions in the way legends did. You know, the, the GOAT conversation he had, what, a couple weeks ago. All the guys, um, to me, on the Mount Rushmore of MMA, whether it's you know, the, the names would be Jose Aldo, GSP, Fedor, John Jones. They they cleared out divisions. There were times you sat there and went, God, who else could he fight? They cleared out divisions. It was, it was, you know, the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. Line them up, knock them down. That's what Anderson Silva did during his title reign at 185. That's what GSP did at 170. Fedor did it at heavyweight. That's what Jose Aldo did at 145. Dominic Cruz at 35, right? Bang, 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 bang. You want to be up there with those guys? You have to do that. And in my opinion, he didn't, so he's not. That's how I feel about his legacy so far. Well, there goes the comment section. I would say it's legacy versus legend. You can make yourself a legend off performances, but you build yourself a legacy by putting it all together. And I, I'm not diminishing Connor's accomplishments. I, I think what he's done from a performance standpoint speaks for himself, you know, Two belts, okay? It's an impressive feat, but let's move past those impressive feats and show me something now tangibly toward rebuilding his career to greatness. Um, and, and I think, you know, the only other explanation I have for this, and Jimmy, you'd be the probably the best person to ask, you think this is Dana having just a little bit of fun with Scott Coker, putting together some meaningless fights that are just a sideshow to show him, you know, the UFC can play that game too? No. No, I really don't. I, you know, it's, it's it's one of those things where it, it could be just Connor driving the bus, where it's it's worth getting Connor back in the octagon no matter what he wants to do. If he wants to get in there and juggle, it'll make decent numbers. So I think, you know, it's it's one of those things where yeah, Connor wants to fight Anderson Silva, Connor wants to fight Tony Silva. Okay, fine. Whatever gets that guy in the cage to make us a ton of money, fine. Okay. Who cares? He wants Nganu? Great. Okay. That's one of the the things that that stands out to me is it's just a matter of What'll get a very fickle and mercurial fighter, which is what Conor McGregor is, always on Twitter, never in the octagon. Okay, whatever gets him back in there, Dana White's good for it. And that's what I think we're seeing. You know, the problem I have with that argument is the, the fall off is steep and, and merciless. When fans stop buying, you know, because they stop buying when you pull the numbers. So how do, how do we know this continues to be a draw? How do you know when people stop buying it would be the ultimate question. And once it does, he hasn't left himself anything meaningful to fall back on. Yeah, no, it, 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 you're not going to know until it's over, right? But right now, Conor McGregor's name will draw. If he keeps having fights like this, 
The Cowboy, okay, not meaningful in division. Anderson Silva, okay, not meaningful in division. Another one of those? I think fans stop buying. But I don't think that's today. I don't think it's tomorrow. I think it's after this one. So, you know, it's 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 you know, it's it's a line you want to get close to and not cross. And I don't think they'll do that. I, I'm you know what? We did no prep and I thought we might disagree, but we didn't. It's just meant to be. Damn it. Other than that, I I know we tried. I know someone in the comment section will vehemently disagree with both of us and tell us how we know nothing about the sport or Conor McGregor. So I will look forward to those comments. We appreciate you guys checking this out, and we will be back very shortly with more content.